Um, today's training, guys, how to crush the offer consult and get your offers accepted, right? Um, really going to be focusing on the process of getting ready to write an offer, um, kind of the step-by-steps on what we do, and then how to turn that into the consultation that you're going to do with your buyer so that you can get them to move forward. Um, and so I think the best way to train on this is to really just create a checklist that we follow. So that's what I did is I created a checklist because I can sit here and like tell you all these different things, but you're probably not going to remember everything, right? And so if we want to have this process be like duplicatable, the checklist is going to be the best way. So I came up with this checklist and I'll uh, share this with you guys at the end. Um, but we're just going to walk step by step and I'm going to walk you through how I would do it. And then we have Thomas here as well, who can chime in on some of the things and then we'll go from there. Sound good? Yeah. All right. So I broke this process up into kind of three crucial steps. The first part of it, let me make this bigger, is gonna be reviewing the comps and disclosures ahead of time. So what I wanna do guys, if I have a client, let's say I toured homes already, um, we looked at a bunch of property, the client says, hey, I wanna make an offer on this property. Before I just say, hey, let's meet up and write the offer, a lot of the work starts beforehand. Before I even meet with the client is when the majority of the work is going to start, right? And it's all in the preparation. And so like a good example of this is, uh, I know Mauricio is working with a buyer right now, a $3 million client. And I sat down with him to kind of review some of his process. And the first thing I said was, hey, Mauri, did you look up the agent, right? Did you look up the agent? Who's the agent you're going to work with, right? And so I wanted to find out that before we go and call him. So um, before I even, uh, and before I even call the agent, right, the step one is going to be reviewing the comps and disclosures so that when I do call the agent, I know what to talk about, right? So we'll break that process down. Um, step two is going to be contacting the listing agent. I'll kind of walk you through the dialogue of what we say when we contact the listing agent. And then step three is going to be now I take all that information and I explain it to my clients on the console. Right. It's like I want to just kind of give you guys an overview first before we dive into the details. It's just breaking it up into three easy steps. Right. So let's go. Let's talk step one, guys. Reviewing the comps and disclosures. So if my client wants to write an offer on, you know, one, two, three Main Street, the first thing I'm doing is I'm doing my homework on that property. Right. I'll set the console with the client. Hey, let's meet later on today, 6 p.m. We could jump on Zoom or we'll meet in person. And by the time we meet, I'll have some information that we can go over to determine the best strategy on moving forward with your offer, right? So right off the bat, I'm looking at the comps. And what I'm looking at is what is the expected price range, right? So I toured our property. I looked at it, right? I obviously know what the property looks like that we're, that we're trying to write an offer on. And I'm trying to now compare it to the different comps, right? And I'm typically going to go back, um, ideally within the last 30 days, if you have data, but no more than maybe 90 days out, right? You want to try to stay within the last 90 days because if we're looking at comps from six months ago or a year ago, it could be a whole different market right now, right? And sometimes you're going to run into some issues where maybe there isn't a lot of sales, right? There's not a lot of sales in the last uh, three months. So you might have to go a little further than three months. And then that's going to require you to do a little bit of kind of calculating and like understanding where the market's headed. So when I'm looking at comps, I'm trying to find the price range. I'm trying to find the closest comp. I'm looking at what's the most comparable property, right? Like if my property is remodeled, I want to compare it to other properties that are remodeled as well, if possible. Um, if they're not there, and like let's say I only have like mine's remodeled and the comps are fixer uppers, well, then I have to kind of guess like, okay, well, how much would it cost to make that property equivalent, right? And I got to guess in my mind, like, okay, this property is probably worth this much more when you're comparing a fixer upper versus a remodeled property. So I'm looking at what's the expected price range. And like with this checklist, guys, you'll be able to print this out. And I want you to literally fill it in. Right? So if you use this checklist on every single offer console and just follow it and just fill in the stuff, it's going to let you, when you actually meet with the client, you'll have all the information that you can kind of go through step by step. Um, Questions on comps, guys. I'm not, I'm not here to show you how to look at comps, right? That's a whole nother training. I'm walking you through the steps of what you do, right? So you should know how to look at comps. You should know how to pull those up. But is there any question on maybe how you're viewing the comps, how you're reviewing them, and kind of the mindset around that? 
maybe the strategy around that. Cool. So, so Enrique, step one is more you on your own doing this research, right? Mm -hmm. This is without the client. I'm doing the homework. Got it. Yeah, this is all in preparation for my offer consultation when yeah. I meet with my client. Perfect. Right? Yes. Sure. Kind of, kind of on some Enrique. So, when when it comes to a property, if there's not many comps available. Um, and how far would you skew it? Like, why would you take a property with two bedrooms that would be in the same area or? Yeah, um, that's a good question, right? And that's that would be more of a detailed training on how to run comps, but it is relevant right now. So like we had this issue with the one that we we're talking about. I'm gonna use yeah. Maori's as the example, yeah. right? Where his property is a lot newer and it was priced even higher than all the other comps, right? So when I'm looking at other comps, there was nothing that was comparable. Um, there was some things that were like maybe three or 400 square feet smaller that were sold recently. Um, but when you look at his and you look at the other ones, they were just like two different presentations of properties. Like this one was like fully decked out, yeah. a really nice swimming pool in the back. Um, so we had to do a little bit of educated guessing to be, to be honest. Right. And if you think about it, if I'm having that problem, the listing agent is having that problem as well. The other buyer agents who are writing offers are having that issue as well, where they're kind of guessing a little bit. They're using the data as a starting point and then they're guessing. So you don't want to go, you want to try to keep it as close as possible. So you can either go further back in time to see if there's something that is more uh, comparable, or you can expand your search criteria a little bit more. Like maybe instead of half a mile, you're going like 0.75 miles, yeah. such as long as you're not in a completely different neighborhood or a completely different school district. Um, cause that sometimes, sometimes like you could be like on one side of a street and then if you go to that side, it's different schools and then that skews the pricing, you know? So you, you have to know the, the boundaries as well. And like what some of those break points are. Um, I would try to keep it within like plus or minus, you know, 10 to 20% in square footage if possible. And I'm looking for the most recent data of sold comps, but I'm also going to look at the pending comps as well. So that's another thing too, is like, if I'm trying to, if there's no comps that have sold recently, but there's another one pending down the street, that's probably going to be the one that has the most weight. So I'm going to call that agent and I'm going to ask them, Hey, I'm comparing, you know, I'm putting an offer on the property down the street. I saw you have a property that's similar. That's pending. Give me some feedback. How did that go? Can you tell me where you ended up at? Can you tell me how many offers you got? Um, you know, what was the activity like? So I'm using that because that's probably the most recent data that we have, which is the pending. It's still not official because it hasn't closed, but it tells us where the market's going, which leads to step to the second part really, really is what are the market trends? Okay, yeah, no, keep going. So really, really quick, Eric. So when you're doing this research, right? And because I know you did this with Maui situation, yeah. is that you also can call the listing agent, which you did. And say, hey, listen, how did you come up with this price? Yeah, that's going to go next when okay. I when I go to step two. And but I, what I like, though, guys, even before he went to step two, he didn't just call the agent blindly. He's no. doing as much as he can on his own. So then when he talks with the agent, he, it's a little, he's a little more educated, Yeah, right? so when I talk with that agent, I want the agent to know that I, I know my stuff. And I'll, I'll go into right. that in step two, right? Um, so what I'm trying to find out in my own research before I even call the agent is what are, where's the market headed? Are the prices continually going up, right? Is it going down? Are homes sitting on the market? Are the last couple comps that sold, they're all going like five to 10% over the asking price. So I can kind of see the trends of where the market's headed. Um, and I'm trying to more predict the future, right? Because let's say the last home sold for 10% over asking, and that was the most recent comp. Well, now mine, if it's still going that direction, it could probably go 10% over asking as well or buyers are going to be looking at that, or the agents are going to be looking at that, right? So you want to take into account is where is the market headed, right? And when the market's headed up, um, it's easy to know that, hey, it's probably just going to continue to go over. The tricky part is when the market's heading down and like you don't, like you're like the seller thinks that their home is worth what it was worth three months ago, but the market's heading in a downward direction. And like now they try to, they have to swallow that pill of, hey, it's going to sell for 50 grand less than the last price. Right. So you're going to have, you can use it on both scenarios when the market's going up or going down. Um, another really good thing to do guys is call any agents on the comps that sold as well. Right. So it's not just what's pending. It's also what has sold. Right. So anything that's sold, I'm calling that, that agent just to see, Hey, you sold the property a month ago. What can you tell me about that? one, Right. Um, 
And you're also going to do like if you have a listing, you're doing the same thing. If you're trying to get a listing signed, you're doing the same type of homework, right? So this is going to help train you on both sides of it. But I'm trying to find out like, okay, as much details as possible. And you want to ask someone like the, like, did it go over asking, did it appraise? That's another good question. Is that the property appraise? Because then you can kind of already know that, hey, appraisal might be an issue and I can prep my buyer for that when we're talking about the, uh, on the console, right? And so I would want you to just kind of go down the line of just understanding all this information and write it in. And this is kind of like your cheat sheet. So then when you meet with the client, you have a cheat sheet that you can already present. Can I add something in there? Yeah. So what I like to do is I actually, most of the time we're doing our offer consult on Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say they want to come to person. What I like to do is I like to actually make those calls to those agents in front of my client. Okay. Right? And, and because they hear it firsthand, right? When, when I call the listing agent, I'm talking about pricing, they're hearing it directly from them. Yeah. Me, right? And then when I call the other ones that have recently sold, and I'm specifically calling the buyer's agents, right, that have represented the buyers. I'm like, hey, like, you know, did you guys end up appraising, right? Like, and I start asking them the type of offer they wrote, right? Yeah. So then my clients are like, well, yeah, they did appraise. And I had one specifically where like, hey, we appraised over actually. So when we're talking about pricing, they already kind of put it in their head, like, hey, well, okay, this makes sense, right? So just something to throw. Yeah, that's, um, you can use either strategy, right? Either you do all your homework up front. Yeah. Or if you have a client, like a buyer who's really skeptical and maybe like you've been, this is like your third offer that you wrote and like, they just don't want to come up, then doing that in front of them is really, really powerful, right? 100%. It's really, really powerful. If you have a client where you're like, Hey, this client fully trusts me. This client's a little easier to deal with. And for time's sake, maybe I'll just do all my homework and then I'll present it to them. Then you could do that. Right? So you're going to have to gauge your client as well and know when to pull out these certain tricks, depending on the type of client that you have. Right, but that's that's a really good uh, a really good recommendation. And I've seen agents do it right there when they're showing the property. They put it on speaker and they're calling the listing agent. Right yep, there. put it on speaker. <laughs> yeah, um, and then so the other thing I want to understand is I'm understanding price range. I'm understanding market trends. Um, what's the condition of the home? Right, so this is where I'm looking through the reports. I'm looking through the disclosures. Um, is this like a turnkey home, or are there going to be some issues on this property that my client needs to be made aware of? Right because my client is looking at me for advice. So yes, I'm going to send them the disclosures. I'm going to send them the reports, but I can't expect them to understand everything that's on there. So it's my job to help uh, decipher that stuff for them and help present it in an easy way for them to understand. So I want to know this property like the back of my hand. So I'll look through all the reports, all the disclosures. I'll see whatever the seller wrote on their feedback for like their uh, property questionnaire, the transfer disclosure, you know, all those little things that they have to check and they have to write in. I want to know all of that information. I want to look at the reports and kind of see, okay, are these major items that need to be fixed? Um, any major repairs? Is this just minor maintenance stuff that needs to be done? And so I'm making a list of those, right? So I would, on this sheet, I would write like my grade of this property, right? And then I would write maybe anything that stood out. Like, hey, the roof needs to be replaced. Hey, the foundation is cracked. And I would just write that on the sheet. So then when I I don't forget when I'm when I'm calling my client, right? Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send the comps and disclosures to my client. And I think what I there's two reasons why you do this. Number one is to save time, right? So you're going to send them. You say, hey, we'll meet today at six on Zoom, but I'm going to go ahead and send you over the comparable sales that I pulled up, and I'm going to send you the reports and disclosures. Can you please look through these before we meet? Why am I doing that? Because the reports of disclosures, there's like hundreds of documents, right? Like hundreds of pages. So how long do you want your buyer consult, your offer consult to be, right? Versus you having to look at them for the first time with, or there's them seeing them for the first time on that consult. You're going to be on that consult for a long time. So when I tell them, I tell them, hey, I'm going to put together a high level overview of, of the home, right? Yeah. Kind of respect your time and yeah, exactly. So I'm going to send that up front and you'll have certain clients, like there's certain clients that they're going to read every page. There's certain clients where they just don't understand it. Right. There's certain clients where they're super detailed. Like they know maybe they bought a property before. So it really doesn't matter. But the whole point is I don't ever want my client to say, well, Hey, like you never showed me this stuff. Like I just took your word for it because it's also the client's responsibility to do their homework. Yeah. Right. And I would, I would, I would also prepare them like, Hey, I know this is a lot of stuff. But go ahead and take a look at it, try to look through it, and then we'll review it together and answer any questions that you have, right? But I at least want you to go ahead and take, you know, take a few minutes to, to take a look at these before we meet. Um, so that kind of covers, covers our end as well, right? 
Okay, that's step one, guys. Any questions on step one? You guys like the checklist style? Does this make it easier so like things don't slip through the cracks? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Cynthia, if you have any question, um, tap it in. Uh, type it in the chat. First thing that Thomas said, you said you have like a you're gonna send over like an overview. Is there a document you send over? I or just, 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 just somebody I, type I, up. I type it up just on Google Sheets. Okay. And then I'll I'll basically put comps and then uh, findings with the home. Right? Got it. Yeah. Okay. So what Thomas is saying, guys, for those of you watching the replay, is that he'll send a like an overview email to the client saying, hey, this is kind of the comp, the price range based off my findings. And this are, these are some of the findings on the reports and disclosures. And it's just kind of an overview. He'll send that ahead of time before he actually meets with them on the console, right? And then you can also attach the disclosures and reports if you want to. But at least you're making it easy for them to understand, right? Um, all right, let's go uh, step two. All right, so the fun part, guys, contacting the listing agent. And this is probably one of the most crucial parts. I mean, they're all crucial, guys, but this one holds a lot of weight because what I have found is that who the listing agent decides to work with, a lot of it is going to de be dependent on their confidence in you to close the deal, right? Like if all things are equal, like I got an offer from Dewey and I got an offer from Francisco and they're the exact same offer. How do I choose who I'm going to work with? Who do I think can close the deal? Who knows their stuff, yeah. right? And that's going to highly, highly be influenced based off the conversation that you have with them. Repeat that one more time. Just so one more, one more time, right? Yeah, it's important to understand this, guys. If I get two offers on, I'm the listing agent. I get two offers on a property and they're the exact same offer. Same offer, same terms, same down payment, same everything, right? The offers are identical. I'm going to base who I'm going to work with or I'm going to push my client to work with a certain uh, buyer based off my interactions with that agent right? And how they carry their conversation. And I'm trying to think in my mind, if both offers are the same, well, who do I think is going to do a better job when it, when we get into close, closing escrow, right? Who sounds like they got their stuff together, right? Who's showing more professionalism? Um, or am I going to have to drag this agent through the transaction? That's what I'm thinking, right? When I was a listing agent, like, and I would even push sometimes for a lower offer if I knew that agent was, was reputable, right? So say like, Dewey's offers like 10 grand less, but I know Dewey and I've worked with him in the past or I know his team or I know his track record or like when I talk to him, like I could tell this guy's on it versus Francisco's offers 10 grand higher. And like, I'm just like, yeah, dude, this guy doesn't really know what he's talking about. I got to think what kind of expectations are they setting with their buyer? Because the better the agent, that means they're having these educated conversations with their buyers. And then when things come up in the transaction, there's a lot better chance that the deal will go through, right? So this, you got to think guys, like you're making an impression. It's not just your buyer that is making an impression with their offer. It's the buyer's agent, the representation of that buyer on who they want to do business with, right? When it comes to closing the deal. So first step guys, before I call the listing agent, I never want to call a listing agent blindly, right? I want to know who am I working with? Who am I calling, right? And the easiest way to see who you're calling is just Google them. Type their name, John Smith, Realtor, throw it in Google, see what pops up, right? And you'll be able to tell like, okay, do they have a Zillow profile? So I always look at their Zillow profile. Do they even have one? Some of them don't have one. Some of them like, I wouldn't even know they're a Realtor if I looked them up online because there's nothing about them, right? And maybe I'll go to the MLS if I need to and see how many sales they closed. Um, but if they don't really have an online presence, I can really, I can already tell maybe they don't take their business that seriously versus like the agent that I call on Maori's deal. Boom. His Zillow popped up right away. He's been in the business for 35 years and on his, on his description of a Zillow over a thousand homes sold. Right. And then I start looking through all of his sales, right? Los Gato, Saratoga, all these higher end neighborhoods, higher end price points. I start looking at his track record. He had like over like on Zillow, it said like over 700 past sales. He's a team with him and his wife. I read his bio, right? Um, I'll even see if they're on Instagram, right? I'll even see if they're on Facebook. And I'm trying to find my angle with this client. So I know, I mean, with the uh, listing agent. So I know when I call that listing agent, like I got to be speaking a certain language when I call him. If he's really experienced, I'm not going to be asking some stupid questions that are on the MLS, right? I'm going to be like getting straight to the point. If I know this guy mainly deals with listings, 
like they also don't want to waste their time. They're busy, right? So right off the bat, I'm introducing myself. Um, his name is John Smith. That's what we'll just use John. Hey, John, how's it going? This is Enrique, PRG Real Estate. I'm calling about your listing on 123 Main Street. Hey, Enrique, how can I help you? Hey, man, I just wanted to introduce myself. We showed the property over the weekend. My clients are super interested. And I wanted to call you and you know see what it's going to take to put together a, a good offer for you. Um, I noticed, and then I'm going to start telling them, right, what, like things that I've noticed, right? Um, hey, I noticed like what I did in this one is I noticed uh, you guys priced it at 3.1 million. I'm looking at the comps, uh, John, and I'm just trying to figure out how you guys came up with that pricing because I don't, the comps are kind of all over the place, right? And then, so right off, right off, right off the bat, like he starts talking, oh, well, hey, did you see that property on Cabana? And because I did my homework, yeah, I saw that one on Cabana. And I'm telling him about the comp. Yeah, it was an Eichler property. It was a complete fixer upper. I didn't really think that compared to yours. And he's like, yeah, but what it didn't say on the MLS was that it sold to the agent, uh, used her mom to buy the property and she's an agent. They're going to tear the property down. They paid almost 3 million just for the land and it's right down the street. Right. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't even say that. Right. And then what I do is I kind of try to create small talk, right? Because we can just get down the business, but I want to find a way to relate to this guy. Um, hey, John, uh, I, I checked you out online. I noticed you've been in the business for 35 years, man. Congratulations. How's the market treating you nowadays? Right. And I'm getting this guy to open up. Right. And then, right. And, and then I'll tell him, yeah, I've been doing this for 20 years. I run a team. Like I just kind of give him a quick summary on me. I run a team and like, we're working with a lot of buyers, man. It's a tough market right now. Would you agree? And then we completely got off talking about the property and started talking about real estate. Right. And it, what you're going to find guys is that agents who do a lot of business, especially if they're the listing agents, they like to talk. So like gas them up a little bit, right? Compliment them. Um, you know, talk about like, Hey man, congrats. I see you're crushing it, dude. How's the market been treating you? Right. Don't, but sound genuine too, right? And then as they start to give you information, don't be the person that's just throwing a bunch of questions, like listen to what they say and then continue to peel the onion back based off what they said. So the guy started telling me like that, hey, he's all, honestly, I'm on my way out. I'm about to retire. He's all, if I could make a few hundred thousand a year, he's like, I'm mainly focused on listings. He's like, I was grinding for a long time. And then um, I started like relating to him. Tell me about it, man. We have a team. We have this many agents. Like, yeah, you know, this is what we're doing. Next thing you know, he's asking me about eXp Realty. How does that all work, right? And then I tell him we work with Zillow. He's asking about Zillow. And at the end, I was like having like a recruiting conversation with this guy, right? And then I get back to the property. Hey, man, I don't want to take too much of your time, man. Let's get back to talking about the property. You know, um, where do you think this one is going to land? You know, because I want to make sure I don't waste your time when I send you an offer. Can you respect that? He's like, yeah, man, don't waste my time, man. Where's it, right? where's it gonna land? And he's like, I think it's gonna land somewhere around here. I go, well, this is where we plan to come in at. Do you think we even have a shot, right? And he goes, yeah, I would send it in. He goes, but it's really hard to say because the market's kind of wild right now, right? So we ended up talking for like 15 minutes on the phone. By the end of that conversation, the guy was like, all right, man, send your offer in. I'll keep a lookout for it. Call me later. And then I'll let you know, you know, kind of where we're at, right? versus like just calling some people don't even call right like but what i'm trying to do guys is i'm trying to build a relationship with that guy right i'm trying to find the common ground right it doesn't matter if you're experienced or not even if you're not as experienced as him you can say hey my team and i this is what we do right hey i'm on this awesome team we've been around for this long you know we, we do really good business out here in the south bay i want to make sure i send you a great offer and so what does that demonstrate to the, to the listing agent when you're speaking that type of language? What do you think that demonstrates? It's experience. Yeah. yeah. Professionalism, confidence, all those things, right? They're like, they're forming their opinion based off my conversation. Like, oh, uh, this guy knows what he's talking about, right? Or this guy seems like a cool guy, right? And so you never know where the conversation is going to go, but you want to like kind of set it up and then let them give you some feedback and then just start talking about whatever they're talking about, right? And you get into rapport, right? So um, some of the questions that I'm trying to find out right now, when I get like out of, out of like kind of the common ground stuff, I want to know how much interest is in the property. Hey man, what was the interest like? How did the open house go? Uh, um, how many offers do you guys expect? Hey, how did you come up with that comp, man? I'm having a hard time. I want to make sure I give you a great offer. You know, I would love to give you a, no a non-contingent offer. 
um, how did you guys price it? Right. So he's telling me about that comp. How many offers are you going to expect? Like I said, and then I'm like, Hey, is there anything the seller needs? Like what would make this a sweet offer for the seller? I'm like, do they need a rent back? Do they need any special circumstances? And he goes, Nope. They moved out. Property's vacant. They just need the best price. I go, so best price, best terms, cleanest offer. He's all, yep. Awesome. John, I'm going to make sure I get you something. All right. Um, hey, um, John, how do you handle offers? Every agent's different. Do you do counter offers? Are you only looking for the highest one? What's your style? Because I want to make sure I work with your style. Right. And so he's telling me, well, you know, if there's three that are close, I'll do a counter offer. If there's someone that just blows it out the water and I'm going to ask the seller what they want to do, and maybe I'll point them in that direction. But that's typically how I handle offers. Okay, great. So now I'm thinking in my mind, well, if I want to win, I got to blow them out of the water, right? If I end up in top three, I'm in counter offer situation. And I'm able to take all this information and relay this back to my client, right? So, and then the other thing before I close, right, the conversation, hey, John, uh, thanks for taking my call. This is all really helpful information. I'm going to be meeting my clients tonight. We're going to write an offer. Um, just really quick, man, my clients are super qualified. I've been working with them for this long. They're a young couple. They got their ducks in a row. We got a great lender that we're working with. Um, they got 50% down. Um, I've already prepped them for how the market, you know, what's going on in the market. Uh, if you work with us, man, we're going to get the job done. You know, my, my reputation is really important. You know, we've got this many five-star reviews or our team, you know, is this or whatever. Um, but I'm really looking forward to working with you, John. I'll touch base with you uh, after we send the offer. Boom. And that's how I closed the conversation. So I looked him up. I, I kind of thought, how am I going to approach this guy? I built some rapport. I found some common ground. Then I get back to asking the key questions on the property. So now I have my ammunition. And then at the end, I close it off by selling my client to him, selling myself and just uh, reinforcing like, hey, if we work together, I'm going to make sure it's as smooth of a process as possible. Right. So what did I just demonstrate to that guy? Would he want to work with me if I did that? If I did all that? So the question you guys all got to ask yourself, like those of you guys that have written offers and you are you doing that every single time, right? And it should be the same exact process, whether it's a $500,000 offer or a $5 million offer. It's the same exact process. That becomes the standard of how you do business, right? You build rapport with people. And what you'll find is like a lot of like agents want to work with other agents who are similar to them. You know what I mean? So you also got to read the room. Like, so don't ask like off the wall questions. Like don't take the conversation somewhere else. You know, like that's the other thing too, where you can like insert different things in the conversation that are going to like make you look a little bit weird, right? Like don't ask off the wall stuff, like go with the flow, right? If he's saying certain things, like you kind of want to go with the flow of that, right? And that's also important too, because people want to work with people who are like them who or who seem like them, right? Makes them feel comfortable. Gives you an opportunity to build your reputation too. Yeah. Right? Like imagine you call like the top listing agent in the area and you tell them all these great things and you deliver on it, right? Yep. Now next time you come around, like guess who gets a call when to see who has active listings coming up or they're gonna, you know, they're gonna share with you, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um your reputation is being built by every single conversation you have, right? Now here's I didn't write this on there, but here's a bonus that I would do. It's like that agent that I talked to, I'm going to call him back. So he didn't end up going with the offer. We got blown out just by the oh, way. Good. Yeah. Like all cash offer, 200 grand more than ours came. Right. And ours was already like push. a push. Right. So I'm going to call him back and I'm going to thank him for giving us a shot. I'm going to say, Hey man, it was great talking to you. I'd love to, you know, stay in touch, add you to my professional network. I appreciate you giving us a shot on this property. I talked to Mauricio. Sounds like we got blown out of the water congrats man like awesome job on your listing hey by the way do you want to keep talking about exp right stuff like that um but i'm just gonna call him just to just to lock up the relationship right yeah. and like just let him know like hey man thanks dude i appreciate you giving us a shot appreciate, you know appreciate the opportunity and then so next time if i ever run into that guy he's gonna remember me right so you got to remember like if you're dealing especially if it's like a top listing agent where you like man this guy always has listings it's important that you build those relationships because you will run into them again if you plan on being in this market, right, Francisco? Well, on the side, close, it was the same thing happened. We we got um, our offer got rejected at the very first time the offer deadline. Yeah. But uh, uh, the guy was just being so cool with me that afterwards I just congratulated him 
and just thank them, like, you know, that, that we became like friends or whatnot. The offer fell out fell out at one point. They had a backup offer, but he told me, like, hey, this is because I really like you. You know, I don't want to go with the backup offer when I see you guys don't want them. And, like, yeah, it was just because of the... There you go, right? But I'll say, cool with them even after he got addicted. So that went a long way, but just being, like, respectful. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So for those of you guys listening, Francisco hit it off with the listing agent. His offer didn't get accepted, but the offer on the property ended up falling through and that listing agent called him. Hey man, you were so cool. I wanted to see if your buyer still was interested and see if I can get you guys, get your foot in the door, right? That's all about building the relationship, guys. That's extremely important, right? Because you'll notice that like the top agents, as you do more business, like they all, we all know each other, right? And so it's what sort of reputation do you want to have in the marketplace, right? Like there's agents that I, I'll talk to certain agents about another agent. They're like, yeah, that guy's a dick, right? <laughs> or no, nah, that, that guy's super cool. Like, no, nah, that guy's super cool. Like, he's super cool to work with, right? And like a lot of the top guys, like they talk about each other, right? Like they, you, you're you going to build a reputation either way. So my thought process is just be cool with everybody. Try to be with cool with, with as many people as possible. And like somehow or some way, like it'll it'll work out in the end. All right, let's move forward, guys. Step three. Explain it all to the client. So now imagine the majority of the work was all done before I even meet with my client. So I want you guys to, to take note of that, right? So now when I meet with my client, how much ammunition do I have? How educated am I on this property? Because I did all of those steps. So when I'm meeting with my client, I'm going to go through this checklist right here, right? So, hey, uh, hey, John, I'm using John again, right? Hey, John, right? We're on the Zoom consultation or we're on the in-person um, hey, did you get the email that I sent you, right? With the overview, the comparable sales and the reports, right? First of all, do you have any questions about those before we kind of move into the meat and potatoes of this consultation, right? Um, and then he might already throw some stuff up, right? Okay, let me write those down so we can address those as we go through that part of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is, hey, John, I did a lot of homework to prepare for this. I want to just give you some feedback on what I found out, right? And then so I'm going to tell him, hey, I had a long conversation with the listing agent because I'm trying to find every angle, every little bit of information that we can use in your benefit to win this property. And here's the feedback from the listing agent. And so what I'm doing now is remember everything that I wrote down, like all my little notes, right? The price range, the comps, all those little things. What did the agent say? How many offers? I wrote notes on all these little lines, right? So now all I'm doing is I'm summarizing steps one and two to my client and giving them all the feedback, right? So I made it easy for myself by taking all these little notes down. I'm not just trying to remember it or guess it. Um, I'm telling them like, this is what the competition's like. Hey, these are what the comps are like. So I'm gonna go through the comps. I'm gonna go through the trends of where the market's headed. Hey, if you looked at the comps, you know, the price range is this, right? Um, I'll, just, I'll pull this up right here. So expected price range on this property based off the comparable sales is somewhere between 1 million and 1.2 million, right? Did you see the comparables that I sent you? The market continues to go up. If you look at the last couple of sales that happened, they all went 10% over the asking price. Meaning if it was listed for a million, it went 10% more, which is a hundred thousand more, right? So now our new benchmark is about 1.1. I would say we're still moving in that direction. We can expect this property to probably go at least 10% or more than the list price, right? Um, I called the agents on the pendings and sold. So I'm just summarizing, I'm reading this list, right? I spoke to one agent. He said on this last property, they got 17 offers, right? And almost all of them were non-contingent, right? And he also said that his, they didn't appraise, right? It didn't appraise by like 30 grand and the buyer came in with an extra 30 to cover the difference, right? Um, let's review the condition of the home. Hey, I looked at the disclosures, uh, the reports. Did you get a chance to look at those? This is what I found looking through the disclosures, right? There's a little bit of wear and tear. There's a little bit of termites, but the major item that I think you got to be concerned with is the roof. The roof is, needs to be replaced, right? It's at the end of its life. It's a 30 year roof. It's been 32 years already. Um, you're probably gonna be looking at replacing the roof that could probably cost you, you know, 20 grand, 15 to 20 grand, depending on who you go with and what sort of roof you do. So I'm already preparing my client like, hey, this is what you're working with right here, right? Um, and then so from there, 
I want to get feedback from them. Hey, how do you feel about this? Hey, is it, do you, are you comfortable with moving forward with this property? If you had to replace the roof, you know, within the next six months, um, is that within your budget? Stuff like that. Uh, and then I'm going to determine an offer price range, right? So I'm going to say, Hey, based off these comps, based off all of this data, based off my feedback from the listing agent, this is where I think an appropriate offer would be to get us in the running, right? And it sounds like there's going to be multiple offers. So uh, in talking to the listing agent, the way he handles offers, like if someone blows everybody out of the water, he's probably going to push his client to do that. Or if we're in the top three, he's probably going to counter offer the top three. And now we're bidding and competing with other people. So Mr. Client, like, do you want to blow them out of the water? Or do you want to maybe get to the top three and have to compete and bid? Right. So we can talk about maybe like an offer that gets us in the top three, or we can talk about an offer that just blows everybody out of the water and we lock this thing up. Right. Um, a good thing that Thomas told me when I was preparing for this is he talks about the investment potential on the property. So that's another thing. Um, Thomas, when you show them about like the investment potential or the return on investment, are you, how do you show them that? Um, basically, I'm taking the, like the data from okay. the past five years. Mm -hmm. right? And then that kind of gives you an idea of what potential future uh, future investment would look like. Okay. So if you have historical over the last 10 years, you're around 6% year over year by appreciation, chances are it's not going to change much over the next five years. Right. So like to show them where this house was at, where basically specifically homes in that specific neighborhood were selling over the last five years. Uh, I take that, you can take, you could even take square footage, for example, right? And kind of filter that range, like, hey, homes between this square footage and this square footage uh, and this specific zip code have been selling. This is, this is what the trends look like. There you go. So having that said, right? Like, and chances are your clients are already doing this homework as well. Right? Yeah. Like they, they have an idea, you know, you like realtor.com or something like that. They, they have a pretty good tool on there where you can kind of filter different, uh, different appreciation areas. But I like to show them the data like up front, right? So that when they're thinking about it, right? I like to be able to say, hey, you'll probably have your, your initial down payment back probably by year two. Or three. There you go. Because they want to know, right? And then they always want to know, even like Ethan, right? Yeah. With him, like you're, you're, I always tell my clients, hey, you're probably not going to see much of a return until probably around like year five, years five through seven. Right. Yeah. So when you start to put that in front of them, they're like, okay, you can see them thinking like, hey, well, that makes more sense, right? And I yeah. like to use that too, even if the client's looking at different areas where, hey, this is why we should focus here. This is what you want. There you go. That's a really good step, guys. That's a really good step because when it's time to write the offer and like they're getting sticker shock, like, oh, shoot, I didn't know it was going to be this much, or man, I'm going to have to pay 100 grand over. You want to tell sell them the benefit, the long term benefit. Like, hey, I always want to show my clients. The long-term benefit of you buying this property i pulled up these stats in this neighborhood right and over the last five years the average ho the homes went from like a million five years ago and now they're going for 1.5 million in this neighborhood so they've gone up five hundred thousand in this neighborhood in the last five years right that's just the round numbers right or you can show percentages hey they've gone up five percent every year consistently right so if i do the math real quick you know in the next five years, you're probably looking at $300,000 in equity that you're going to gain, right? So yes, right now, getting your foot in the door, we'll probably have to be a little bit of a, aggressive to get into the market. But in the next five years, like this is what you're projecting. The next 10 years, this is what you're projecting and you're making your money back, right? And, and some, right? The appreciation. So I think that's good because now when you're telling them, hey, I want you to go 100,000 over the asking or hey, let's just go 125 and blow everybody out of the water. Then they're like thinking, okay, this is an investment that's going to pay off in the long run. So I'm determining the offer price range with them, right? And it's all based off the data and the feedback from the agent. I'm not just guessing a number. It's all based off feedback, all based off the data and what the market's showing. Then I'm going to determine, uh, I'm going to come up with the terms of the offer, right? Our contingency periods and stuff like that. And so, hey, is the loan good, right? Do we need an appraisal? Is there a chance this property doesn't appraise, right? And if it doesn't appraise, do they have a cushion to come in with extra money, right? Hey, based off the condition of the property, are you okay with the condition? Are you okay with buying this property even if the roof needs to get fixed? The reason why is if we're okay with all of these things, then we can come in with maybe a non-contingent offer or we can come in with as little contingencies as possible, right? So I always want to work and walk through the terms and see what how comfortable they are. And it's going to be based off their financial ability. It's going to be based off what the lender has qualified them for. 
and based off how comfortable they are with the actual condition of the property, right? Maybe the guy's a maybe the guy's a handyman, right? Or a contractor, or his brother's a contractor. He's like, yeah, man, that's easy, man. Yeah, I'll probably get the roof done for half price anyways through my brother, right? Or all these little things. I already, when we looked at the property, I already kind of took into account that I'm going to repaint this place. We're going to rip the floors out. I'm going to do some landscaping anyways. So yeah, I'm fine with that, right? I've seen sometimes like I've had like, Working with other agents, and they're like, "Oh, this home needs like a new roof. Like, I don't think it's a good home. Like, don't make that decision for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. like uh, they, let them make be the ones to make that decision." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our job is not to make the decision for the client. Our job is to present the information and help lead them to them making the best decision for them. But right. Also educate yourself on what potential costs would be. Yeah, there. and you got to you want to inform them, right? Hey, these these are the pros. These are the cons that I see. Based off me knowing your situation and knowing like you don't have that much of a budget to work with, like, hey, maybe this is a lot of repairs for you, right? Like you're coming, you're an FHA, you have minimal down payment. Do you have money to make all these repairs? This may not be the property, right? Or you may, this may get your foot in the door because you're not competing because you don't have, you have a small down payment and maybe you get your foot in the door and little by little you fix this property up over time, right? But at least you start tapping into gaining some equity. Right. So those are all things you got to talk to them through, talk through with them uh, so that they can make the best decision. Now, here's another thing, guys, that's really important is I want you to start setting expectations on what's going to happen next. Right. Because a lot of times, like we do our preparation, we send the offer in and we're just hoping it gets approved or it gets accepted. And we're not even letting the client know that there's a chance you're going to get counteroffered. There's a chance I'm going to have to ask you to come up higher, right? There's a chance that this may happen. So you already want to set the expectations with the client up front on, hey, here's what's going to happen. We're going to put the offer together. We're going to submit the offer. We're going to do our best to try to get your offer accepted. But based off the feedback, there's a possibility that we can maybe get counteroffered. And at that point, we got to decide, is it worth it for us to come up a little bit more or maybe change some of our terms? So I just want to let you know that up front so that we're not surprised later, right? And then the way it works is I send that offer in. Um, they're all due tomorrow at noon. The listing agent is asking for 24 hours to get back to everyone. So we'll know 24 hours later, and then we'll know kind of where we stand, and then we'll see how we want to respond. The three ways that they can respond is going to be, number one, they flat out reject your offer. That's one way that they can respond. Number two, they accept your offer. Like they love your offer. They just accept it as is. We're good to go. Or number three is they can counter offer you. Those are pretty much the three ways that the listing agent can respond, right? So what we're hoping for is we're hoping for an accepted offer. That's our first choice. Or number two is we get counter offered. So now we are in the running to at least compete for this property, right? And that's what we're hoping for in our response. We don't ever just want to get flat out rejected, right? That means we just, we're not even close. All right. Any questions, Mr. Buyer, on what's going to happen next? All right. Now, you guys, any questions on that? Like that, that talk right there of setting the expectations? Okay. Now, let's say we're all good. Okay, great. Enrique, sounds great. Okay, um, you know, let's make the offer. We're going to go 1.2 million. We're going to go no contingencies. We're comfortable. You know, everything sounds good. Okay, great. Before we send the offer, what I want to do is I want to get your lender on the line. And I just want to make sure your lender knows the offer that we're submitting. And I want to make sure he gives us the green light, the green stamp of approval on this, right? Because I know it was maybe a couple of weeks since you got pre-approved. Um, just want to have them double check everything and then also let them know we're submitting the offer so that they can also call the listing agent and try to put in a good word for us, right? Because that's going to create a stronger package from our end. So then what I'll do is I'll get the lender on the line. I would have already prepped the lender beforehand. Hey, I'm meeting with, you know, Jim and Jane at six, you know? Um, can you be on standby? Because once we're wrapping up the console, I'm going to get you on the line and I want to kind of run the scenario by you, right? Or maybe I ran the scenario by the lender already up front because I kind of already know where the offers are at. Um, hey, this is probably going to go 1.2. It's probably going to go non-contingent. That's kind of what we're competing with. Um, what do you think, right? But I want them to hear from their lender, right? And getting the lender either on the phone or on the Zoom or whatever you're going to do. And the lender can explain, you know, maybe his concerns or reinforce, hey, this is what we're doing. And it shows that we're working as a team as well. And then it just gives the buyer confidence in wanting to move forward as well. Right? So never just send the offer. And then you don't even tell your lender that you got to offer up. That's big red flag right there, right? You're putting yourself at a disadvantage. 
right? Because what if the rates change? What if the lender's like, hey, man, like they, that program's not here no more, right? Like, hey, you know what? Like, ah, that's a really close one. Like their TTI is, I wouldn't go non-contingent on that. And you already sent a non-contingent offer because yeah, you didn't have that conversation, right? So you got to remember, like just getting your offer accepted, that's only one part of it. You got to close the deal, right? Lo the loan has to get financed. So you want to make sure all your ducks are, are in a row. Any questions on that? Okay, cool. And then uh, the last step is going to be basically submit the offer, right? And that's a whole nother training on submitting the offer. And like, I mean, I'll give you the rundown, but you want to make sure that you're presenting a nice package to the, the listing agent. And that's where we have our templates that we send out. So we have like an offer email template. It talks a little bit about us. It's like a bio. It talks about the client. It gives them links to our past reviews. It gives them links to our lenders reviews. It gives like a quick summary of the offer. Like, hey, these are the main points of the offer, the price, the terms. Um, it reinforces like, hey, I've been in the business for this long, right? If you work with me, like it kind of just reiterates a lot of the things that I said on the conversation. And then we're presenting a nice clean offer. Um, everything's attached. Everything's labeled properly. And um, we're sending the offer in and then we're doing our follow-up. Right. So after I send the offer in, I want to follow up just to confirm that it was received. Um, be a little careful on how much you bug the listing agent at that point, too, because sometimes like if the listing agent is getting 30 offers and they're like, dude, like I'll call you tomorrow. Right. Like sometimes that could play a role. But what I found is that if you did a good rapport in the beginning, right, then when you follow up with them, they kind of already know who you are. And they may already be rooting for you. So they're a little more open to like talking to you, right? Or like, say you guys are already like on a text kind of relationship. Hey, John, I just want to let you know, I just sent over that offer, man. Nice and clean the way you asked for it. I really look forward. Let me know what we can do to make this work, right? Something like that. And then he might say, okay, I got it. Touch base with you tomorrow, right? And then you got to follow up. So your job after that is to like find out where do we stand? What can we do? Is there anything we can do to make the offer better, right? How's it looking for us? And hopefully, like, you've built enough rapport where that agent is giving you, like, good, honest feedback. Hey, man, you're looking good. Or, hey, man, I think you're in the top two or three. Probably going to counter offer you. Okay, great. Hey, is there anything I can do now to just, like, eliminate the counter offer? And that's what I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to not go to counter offer if possible. I'm trying to find out what it's going to take, and then I'm going to give that to my clients. Hey, he said we might get a counter offer, but if we just come up 30 grand right now, just resubmit the offer, we're like first place and like they might just go for that. All right. I've had that happen um, where I've been on the listing agent and I use that as ammo on the buyer, right? Because I knew we had multiple offers and I knew we were kind of like hitting the limit. And um, I told the agent because I wanted to work with her. She had a strong offer, but I'm like, hey, look, it, I can do two ways. I can counter offer all three of you. I go, or if you could just come up 50K right now, I go, I'll just counter you directly and we'll have a deal. And I knew that that was like a phenomenal offer if I got 50K more. And I didn't even have offers that like, I didn't even think the other offers were going to come up, but I had three offers. So I was using that as leverage, right? And she's like, all right, don't send the counter. Like, let me talk to my client. I'll call you right back. Calls her client. Calls me right back. Hey, we're good to go. I'm resubmitting the offer right now. 50K more, no contingencies, all clean. And I'm like, yes. But that's what it takes right there. Is how, you see, that I think that's a big, I mean, there's a lot of, there's huge nuggets, in, a lot of nuggets in this, in this presentation. But to me, that right there is get fighting for those inches. Mm -hmm. Right there, getting on the line with that agent, saying, hey, what can I do right now? And avoiding that counter offer. Yeah. Right? And, and if you have that level of like, enthusiasm and interest the listing agent is also like man like this guy really wants it right this guy really wants it i want to i want to work with people who really want it if you're just kind of like eh, i'll see right even if your buyer is like i'll see but that doesn't mean you gotta be like that right you still gotta act like hey like i'm the shark i'm the top agent i'm gonna freaking pick my offer like you're gonna want to work with me hey, you go in there assuming you're gonna win yeah right going there with that mindset it's like they're going to feed off that, right? And I, I like that too. I do that a lot. Like, hey, like anytime I get told I'm top two or three, I'm like, yeah. what's going to take us to do it right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, don't be afraid to ask some questions. Most people are just waiting for the counter. I'm like, nah, 
Yep. Always ask if you if you know you're in the top two or three, you always ask what's it going to take to make it happen right now. And, and I think it plays a few different ways, right? You're you're getting that information from the listing agent, which is one one thing. The other thing is relaying it back to your buyer to create that sense of urgency, and they have the confidence in you that you can bring your buyer up to make that. Yep. Right. I think that that's the winning combination when you get that far. Yeah. Right? Bridging both those things. Together. And I feel like, guys, I feel like this, like that last part is the part where like where a lot of people get close, right? They do a great job. They show homes. They book the appointment. They showed the homes. They found the property that they want. They submit an offer, but then they don't like go aggressive at the end and like really try to push it in. And like they're losing by like, they're like on the one yard line, right? Yeah. And they're not doing that last drive to like get it into the end zone, right? They're kind of like just throwing their hands up and letting like chance like hoping that they get the counter or whatever. And you, you don't, you don't gain anything by hoping guys, you, you don't lose anything by pushing. Right. Cause all they can say is no, nah, Hey man, I like your style, but my client wants to counter off. Well, we're not going to take contingent. We're not going to take the preemptive. We're not going to take a preemptive. Hey, but dude, I, I like your style, man. Like yeah. you'll get respect from them. Right. Like, Hey, I could tell you know what you're doing. I could tell you're fighting for your clients. I like your style, but unfortunately my client does not want to take a preemptive offer. That, that's the best, but respect. I respect you, and, like, let's see if we can make it work once it's time to review offers, right? I think, I mean, this is a little bit of a mindset is that we get here in the mornings, right, beginning to make these calls and set these appointments. Remember, you got to keep that same energy all the way to the very end when yeah. you're trying to get your offer accepted. All those little things start adding up, right? So it's important to remember to do these steps because it's not a time unless you're wasting your time doing all this stuff early in the morning, right? Especially when you guys are starting off the first 30, 60, 90 days. Of setting these appointments, then you gotta punch it in at the end. Yeah, got it. That, that's that's the big big takeaway for me in, in this training and seeing that our conversion can go up if we start utilizing this this, this uh, process. Yeah. Question. Uh, I have a client who, like, I, I told him like where the payment plan. Yeah. But he still want to make like an offer like below it. How, how would you go about that? So Dewey's question was: I have a. I told my client where the home is going to land, but the client wants to make an offer below it. I think part of that is probably like in your whole presentation to the client from the beginning, right? Like I would say that could be one thing, right? Like you gotta see like, what can I control, right? Did I set the right expectations with my client when I took them on to shop for properties, right? That's one thing. Or you could just have a client who's just crazy too, right? Like that does happen yeah. where clients are just stubborn. And so there's two ways to go about that, right? You can say, hey, Mr. Client, as your realtor, I don't advise that you do that. My job is to help get you the best shot, the best opportunity to get this property. I do not advise that you come in with that because you're gonna waste your time, you're gonna get blown out of the water. But I know this is your first time writing an offer. And if you just wanna, if you have to find that out for yourself, I'm fine with doing that on this one. But if that doesn't work, then you gotta take my advice now going forward. So sometimes you, sometimes you gotta let them fail. And then, but if they're doing that on every one, yeah. you gotta cut them, bro. And I think you gotta ask you what Enrique said first is that you gotta you gotta control what you can do. Did you do all that? Right? Did you do all that? Talk to the agent, call, do even go beyond talk to the agent in front of the client. Right? Yeah. Did you do all those things? And did you do it with confidence? Right? Yeah. Doing it like you know, you know what you're doing, right? I think it's it's important. That confidence carries a lot, a lot of weight. Us hesitating, no one wants to buy a house if you're hesitant. For a two million dollar, no one wants to buy a two million dollar house from an agent that's not confident. Yeah, so and gaining that confidence is by practicing this, doing the work behind the scenes, so you can deliver a fire presentation. I think if you're, you do all those things too, right, it's easier for you to have that conversation with your client. Say, hey, well, after looking at all this data, like, what makes you like? Tell me, explain, explain that numbers. Yeah, like, like I, I literally will ask them. Yeah, most yeah. people won't. They'll just do the offer. Right? Yeah, and ask them, right? Like, so what you got to do is what Thomas is saying is. You got to follow their logic, right? Try to understand their logic. How did Mr. Customer, I just showed you the data. The homes are going hundred grand. You want to come up 50 grand less. Please help me understand how you came up with that. I want to understand like how you figured that math out, right? And just stay quiet. And then sometimes they'll be like, well, I just feel, remember if they just feel, yeah, right. Like <laughs> you can't go off feel, right? Um, and then sometimes I'll even like give them like a, like a, like a dumb remark, right? I'll say, hey, you want to come 50 grand less? Like, I don't, I don't think that's a good offer. 
But like, I understand you're trying to get a deal. Why don't we go a hundred grand less? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> because I want to show them that they're not being reasonable. And then they go, ah, oh, hundred grand less. No, I go, okay. I go, see, why don't we go 500 grand? Why don't we just offer them a dollar, right? Because I mean, might as well feel like, like it's worth the lowest possible, right? But and then this is real life stuff, guys. You're getting the truth. I will say that to them, right? Yeah. Hey, right? Why don't we yeah. why don't we go even lower than that? Right? It's like, like that's the strategy we're trying to do. Right. And I but then I'll go back, I go, but I don't think that's what you're trying to accomplish, right? I go and I'll try to figure out what they're trying to say, right? What I what I think you're trying to do is you want to make sure you don't overpay for a property or you want to make sure you get the best deal possible. Am I correct? All right. Okay. So here's how I can help you do that. Right. And then I also show them the cost of waiting. Right. Right. There's a cost of waiting. So, hey, look at every month. These homes have been going 50 grand higher, 50 grand higher, 50 grand higher. We can waste a month and try to go low ball. But next month, by the time like we come to our senses, it's already 50 grand more. Right. So would you rather bite the bullet right now? Right. And get your foot in the door. And then um, let me show you the return on investment. Right. That Thomas demonstrated the homes have been going up this much over time. So you're going to get this money back. You're going to make money, right? And I'll, I'll try to just walk them through that and like point the lot. And then at the end, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Sometimes people just, they like, let's just try it, see what happens. And I'm like, hey, man, like you didn't hire me to just try things. You hired me to help you get a home, right? And do it as quick as possible because it's getting more expensive by the day. And then the Yeah. There's no way, right? But but here's the thing is you have to be okay with having these conversations with your client and you have to be able to say it with this much enthusiasm and this much confidence. And you also have to really value your time. When the client sees that you're just doing whatever they say, they don't look at you as a leader, right? So remember, you don't want to be the nice guy, right? We're not here to just be nice and build friends. We want to be the, the, the authority. We want to be the the consultant, we want to be the advisor, right? We want to be the person that leads them to the finish line. And the only way you're going to do that is by taking control and taking charge and saying, here's what I recommend. Here's how we should do this. Here's why that's not a good idea, right? And show them why they need to listen to you. So I'm going to like show, not tell. Show, so yeah. Like you show them why these are, this is this instead of telling them this is why. It's, it's both, true. right? So it's both, right? You show yeah. and tell, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like in school, you show and tell, right? You're going to show them the stuffed animal and then you're going to tell them about it, right? In this case, you're going to, sh you're going to show them the data and then you're also going to tell them and help them all connect the dots together, right? Uh, right on time, guys. 105. Any last closing questions, guys, before we wrap this up? Okay. Yes. So this checklist, guys, for anybody watching, if you want this checklist, please message me. Anybody on our team, I'm going to go ahead and put this in Slack. You guys will get this. But my challenge to you guys for my request or maybe let me be your leader like you have to do this let me just say like that right going forward if you're not doing this you need to print this out every time you're going to write an offer and you need to just go down the checklist and check off the boxes because that's the yeah. only way to ensure that you did every single thing on it and then after a while like it'll just become like clockwork you have it memorized and you just do it um, but for those of you guys that are getting started, the checklist is the best way for you to remember this. And even sometimes it could be a refresher, right? Sometimes the market changes and like what was working before is not working. And then we got to revisit our checklist. If, are we hitting everything on our checklist? Or you know what? Lately, I've been getting lazy. I've been leaving that step out, right? And so this is time to audit. Are you doing this? Are you not doing it? Now, real quick, going around the room, what's one thing in here that you're saying, hey, I wasn't doing that and I got to add that in? One of these little steps for some of you guys that have written offers already. Do we? For me, it's the time. So yeah. Like I didn't really talk about the debt or like the deal over here and how much they made. Okay. Like they were to make an offer on this property. So okay. Okay. So do we said talking about the return on investment, the trends, how much you're going to make in five years off of this property? That's great. Add that in, Andre. Oh no, I'm on the exact same page. Same thing. Yeah, I mean, like the fact that it's showing the value long term. Long-term value. Also trends of like people predict all these years too, like mm -hmm. different strategies. Cool. What else, Mark? Anything you're not on here, or one um, thing that I stood out for you? Maybe. Well, I mean, I think all of these great offers now, so I think focusing more on step two, building a better relationship with listing agents. Okay, building a better relationship with listing agent. Awesome.
And and that can be tricky at times if they don't answer their phone. Yeah. Right. That was going to be a question. I don't want to interrupt Enrique, but what what are you know if they're not they're not answering their phone, right? I mean, is there anything that you? I mean, obviously we're calling them, we're texting them, send them a video message. I, I don't know. What, yeah. What, so what, if the client if they're not answering their phone, then I'm like trying to do all the things to get in touch with them, right? So I'll do the the double tap, right? Like call, they don't answer. Hang up, call right back, they don't answer. Text, see if they respond. Then if they don't respond, send them a video, right? Hey man, it's Enrique. I'm sorry to keep bugging you. I thought I'd send you a quick video. I want to write an awesome offer on your property. I'm sure you're getting bombarded, but I want to make sure that I give you the winning offer and you get what you need, whatever. Can you please give me a call back? Three minutes to be on the call. Right? Yes. Are you spacing that or are you just kind of doing it that same day? Whatever you think. I mean, if the offers are due tomorrow, then I'm like, I'm yeah. hitting them up. I'll maybe wait 10 minutes and then send them the video. Options, right? Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. LinkedIn. There you go. There you go. Right. What I've done is I'll add them on Facebook too. If I see them and I'm not friends with them, I'll add them, right? And then some of these guys, oh, they see like my name and then they see it pop up on their phone. DM. That's one where I couldn't get a hold of the listing agent, right? Yeah. This is one you know. Yeah. It was uh, Kevin Trung, right? Yeah. But I found out he was the lead the team. So I couldn't get a hold of him, so I hit up his team members. I'm there like, you hey, go. I couldn't get a hold of Kevin. Right. So if you can't if you get can't get in touch with the guy because he runs a team, call his team member and say, "Hey, man, I'm trying to get a hold of your team leader." And, and you know, just the takeaway, just with, with everything Thomas has been contributing, he's just thinking outside the box, guys. He's just finding ways to win, right? I mean, again, we can't even. There, there's things that he's doing that he's just he's he's just trying to figure a way, an angle, find a way to win. I think that's that's a big takeaway as a real estate agent is that you you you're gonna have problems. You gotta find solutions. Right, you got to find the workaround. Yep. And, and you and you got to you got to continue to go after it. And it's it's impressive because I know Thomas has played sports, so I know a lot of that kind of contributes to that. But it's just when you're going into this real estate game, you got to understand you are a problem solver. There's going to be hurdles. There's going to be issues. But how are you going to come up, come around and find that angle and, and find a way to win for you and your client? I think yeah. it's three. It's a, that's a mindset. That's huge. A mindset. It is a mindset. It's having that mindset. Like guys, I'm gonna win. I'm going to do what it takes to get my offer accepted or I'm going to go out swinging basically. Right. Like I'm going to find whatever angle I can find. Shoot. I'll show up to their office. If I got to show up to their office, if that's the last case scenario. Right. And I'll show up with the Starbucks. Right. Like, Hey man, I, dude, you're a hard guy to get a hold of. I brought you a Starbucks. Right. Like whatever it might be. Like I would do that. Right. Yeah. yeah show up to the office, whatever. Set them an edible, uh, edible arrangement. I don't know. Right. Like, let me ask you this. You know, you can send Starbucks gift cards on text now, right? So I sent you guys someone. So if the guy's not answering his phone and I sent him a Starbucks gift card for $5 through the app and it showed up on his phone, Enrique just sent you a $5 gift card. Do you think he's going to respond? Hell yeah, he's going to respond. Right? Yeah. And then I sent him a video message like, hey, I just sent you a Starbucks gift card. I just want to put a face to a name. Looking forward to uh, – to I sent you a gift cards to get some coffee with your client to discuss my offer. There you go, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, good. that's good, right? But how many of you guys are thinking like that, right? Like, and that's what it takes, guys. That's the separator between just the average agent. And that's the one between the one that's like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to figure it out. I'm going to make it happen. I'm a problem solver. I find angles, right? And I approach my business and I have that mentality when I'm calling leads and when I'm working with clients, it's just a different, it's a winning mindset, guys. You've got to have that winning mindset. You will not survive. You will not produce at a high level if you don't have that slight edge. Or we're, we're listening to that podcast. They call it, you have to have a dog, the dog in you, right? You got to have that dog in you, right? What does that dog in you mean? That fight, right? That fight, like you got to muster that up from somewhere, right? Some of us are too passive, too aggressive. Do we? Get mad a little bit, bro. Right? <laughs> Get mad, bro. Get upset. Get passionate. Get passionate, right? Get passionate, right? Like passionate because they're when you approach these guys, they're gonna see like they're gonna pick up like, do you believe what you're what you're saying? Right? Yeah. If I don't believe that you believe what you're talking about, then Game over. I'm not, yeah. I think if, if you're coming in here every single day, you're attending trainings, you're out showing properties, you're doing all these things, right? And you go out and meet a client at a property, like you should go in there with the thoughts that you're going to sell the house or whatever. You're like, I don't meet someone and think I'm not going to sell the house. Like I, in my mind, I really believe that I'm going to sell it. Every client that I meet, I'm going to deliver the keys yeah. to the house, right? But the same thing when you write an offer, I'm not just writing offers for fun because there's a lot that goes into that, <laughs> right? Example right now, let's see, it's like, 
if you bring me this, we're going to get you this. Yeah. That's it. You're already setting the tone for the client to know how they're going to be your house. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to, you got to, when your clients are, cause you think about this too. Like the other thing we didn't talk about is your clients are nervous sometimes, right? This could be their first house they're going to buy. They don't know what to expect. So you also got to like, you got to, you got to pers not persuade them, but you got to like sell them the dream a little bit too, right? You got to reinforce why they're doing this. Hey, I remember when I first met you at that first property, you told me you're doing this because you want to get out of that two bedroom condo you're in. Now we're here and this is that opportunity. Let's move you forward, right? I know it's a little bit scary. I know we got to come up higher, but you're well qualified. I talked to the lender. You're okay with the property. Like, let's not get held up on this 20 grand or whatever. You're going to make that back in five years. Let's move it forward. You got to like, you got to hype them up a little bit, right? You got to inspire them a little bit and remind them of why we're doing this, right? And sometimes that's all they need. They need that extra little push and then like, okay, talk them off the ledge a little bit, right? Calm their nerves. Um, that's all I got, guys. We're at a little bit over an hour. Hope you guys got some value today. Let's go.